Hey guys, welcome to the channel. I'm Aerovloche, or Seth. You can call me whichever. Uh, as long as you just don't, don't call me Shirley. So if you've watched my videos in the last couple of months, you probably noticed almost in every video, the scenery behind me is different. And the reason behind that is I moved a couple months back from Ohio to California. I basically concluded that sim racing is way cooler than having a girlfriend. <laughs> But in reality, I moved back in with my parents to basically 100% focus on the goal of building this YouTube channel. And my father is one of my biggest supporters. In fact, he's the one constantly yelling at me to get a video uploaded, so you can thank him for that. <laughs> but really, I think he's just playing the long game and waiting for me to become one of those YouTubers that buy their parents a massive house. But throughout this YouTube journey, I've been constantly trying to improve my quality, in my skill set of making better videos and creating better studio environments to just make the best quality content possible. And when I first moved out to California, I basically had everything in my bedroom. I painted the, the bedroom and, and I had my massive sim, which basically took 75% of the room, which made it really difficult for one, to have a bed, a desk, and a table for shooting like product shots and stuff. But I managed to do it by basically making my room somewhat of like a college dorm room, which realistically, despite the very small area, I, I made it work pretty well, but I was getting sick of climbing up to get into bed. <laughs> but there was a couple of other issues with that room. One, it got very hot and while doing a race, it was miserable even with the fan on me. And for some reason, the AC never seemed like it like blew that cold in just that specific room. And then the other thing was the space. Being that it was a tight space, while well, I could make it work, it added a lot of time to setting up the camera, lights, and other things that made me waste a lot of time setting things up to get started instead of just having things ready to go and pressing the record button and filming some content. And then lastly, working on the rig in that tight space was a huge struggle and for some reason I can't seem to stop tinkering with my rig. So constantly I was just bumping into things and I even this might be the the straw that broke the camel's back, and I not only scratched one of my OLED monitors, I scratched two. <laughs> oh, and how did I forget? I had a huge 60OF motion system coming, and there was no way I was going to be able to have that fit as well in that room. So, I needed more space, and that's where this garage comes in. So my goal was to basically just make the ultimate man cave garage studio that would hopefully make my workflow more seamless. So first up, I figured I'd save you an episode of Hoarders and I organized the garage and got a lot of crap out of there to have a nice open space. And I painted just one wall cause that was gonna be like my main backdrop wall, the same gray studio color that I was using in the bedroom. And for the floor, I just got the super cheap, like $20 carpet that came in in about an eight by 12 size. So I bought four of them and just uh, put some double-sided carpet tape to hold it down. Considering how cheap the carpet was, I'd say it came out pretty good. I mean, it serves the purpose that I need it to, to serve. Now I got my desk in here, building the uh, monitor stand and my old sim rig because I was still waiting on the 60OF system to come. So I ran this as a temporary setup for a little bit, but I appreciate my buddy coming to help me out and getting the desk built and, and the rig built. Wait a second, what is he doing? Just laying on the floor? I mean, I don't pay him anything, but the audacity. And now, the piece de resistance. The full motion setup is here. It's been a couple weeks by, by this time from when I started this whole debacle. So this is a PT actuator six DOF setup. So that's six degrees of freedom. Front and rear traction loss, pitch, roll, uh, and surge uh, forward and backwards. I've only been able to do this because of a good friend of mine who gave me a heck of a deal and has given me basically a ton of opportunities for uh, making more awesome sim racing content. So I'm hugely grateful to him, but I hope he's not expecting any backseat favors. Okay, so I just got everything finally some somewhat organized. Let's, it's, not, it's not completely organized, but it's organized chaos. Uh, I kind of got the first layer kind of laid out um, thank God for Sim Racing Garage because I'm kind of using his video. I couldn't find the manual, so I'm using his video 
to uh, get an idea of, of what goes where. Um, and yeah, I guess it's just build time. We'll just take a look at what we got going on over here. So here's most of the parts, the P1X and a couple of the levels and a couple more pieces here. This is all the first stage, kind of somewhat laid out. And then I got the actuators here uh, for, um, those are the ones that mount to the, the main frame, the P1X. That's gonna be your three duo F on the top. And then we got the surge and traction loss actuators there and some railing system or another to uh, get that work. I'm already kind of been kind of figuring things out, kind of planning uh, what I'm gonna do. I've already realized that this track system or the bottom uh, system is too wide for how my current monitor stands are built. So it won't fit in between. So I'm gonna have to, I'm hoping I can just rotate these pieces here uh, 90 degrees and just push them all the way to the edge here and I think that will be enough if not then I'm basically at the edge right here. I'll have to get a little bit more creative um, So That will be a something to figure out for later These are very Interesting t-nuts. I've never seen these before uh, You actually like you can put it in and then you twist it and then you put the nut on top but it seems weird because like you tighten it and this will just want to spin inside. I don't know. I'm not sure if there's a technique to, uh, to using these, but kind of interesting. I can tell you right now, they were not interesting T-nuts. They were actually a huge pain to deal with, but still made it work. You just gotta, you just gotta kind of learn their quirks and you get used to it, but I definitely prefer regular T-nuts. But yeah, building this with no manual, uh, not great and apparently i guess this is a huge issue with people getting the pt actuator system luckily sim racing garage came in clutch thank you barry appreciate you and i also had my buddy on the phone to walk me through some of the things that uh were a little bit confusing but uh, a huge player in figuring out a lot of things was the witness marks so if you saw some scratches it turns out that's probably where it needed to be mounted so here I am actually mounting the traction loss actuators backwards, which I later had to uh, flip. And my buddy here is getting the center shaft dialed in to make sure that it can slide along those two bars smoothly. And that was pretty much it for the first layer. Then we moved on to the second layer. Overall, the building experience wasn't too bad, even despite not really having, uh, having the manual. But I mean, it's... It's more so just taking your time, make sure things are straight and everything like that. Standard sim rig building stuff. I don't know what my buddy's doing here. I thought we were building sim rigs, not throwing it back, but you do you. We need a rubber mallet. Yeah. I should have one. Check the bottom, very bottom drawer of the toolbox. Oh, tits. You guys. You guys are a bunch of wannabes. <laughs> Dude, it's perfect. And now we have the third level complete. Can move on to building the P1X chassis. All right, so I think this is pretty much end of day one. We got almost the P1X chassis built, but I'm actually missing some bolts for the uh, uprights. So my buddy's gonna ship those over. So I can't really progress anymore on that. But the motion part of the rig is, is pretty much done. Uh, this is all built. That's just the, that'll mount to the P1X for the surge. Um, but yeah, it's looking, looking pretty cool. 
ready to go. It's currently 11.22 p.m. So I spent a good deal of time today working on this. But I actually wasn't expecting to get this far at this uh, this quickly. But a lot of thanks to my buddy for coming over and helping me out too. We'll pick up more tomorrow or whenever I get the parts. So All right, so day two. Uh, I was thinking I was not going to tackle it today. I was going to wait for the extra parts. But then I was like, oh, wait, I could probably do a little bit more uh, stuff before the parts that I'm missing arrives. And so... Let's show you around here. I got the uh, P1X chassis on top and it's mounted onto the, come on focus, the uh, railing system there. But one thing, a challenge I ran into is I had mounted this directly in the center, but I have the, it extended completely and you basically want this piece to go all the way to the edge there without touching. That way, uh, this will move, the whole rig uh, will move farther back and not be too front uh, biased for the surge. So I'm currently in the process of just relocating that center bar and getting the maximum travel as close to this bottom uh, wall here. But yeah, you can see the, the whole rig can move forward and backwards now. And then basically just building up the pedal tray uh, the seat, and then the uprights for uh, the semi-cube. Oh, another thing that I was trying to figure out is I kind of st uh, sat in a guesstimate position to see where my eye level would be because I was really worried that my monitor stands were not going to be tall enough uh, to accommodate how high this rig is going to have me sitting. But I did some rough estimates, and I looks like I'm going to be good. Uh, and I'll even have a little bit of room if it's a little bit higher than even my rough estimates were. So I'm really happy that the monitor stand's gonna work. I'm not gonna have to buy any uh, more extrusion and uh, we should be good to go. Okay, so I was just running into an issue. I, uh, I hooked up all the actuators and uh, first, I didn't hook them up right. I actually had to open up this box here, and they're each labeled to uh, which actuator it's supposed to go to. So I fixed that, and then I was running to the Thanos controller. Was uh, just a blank screen, and it was just like unresponsive. But I found out there's a. It's kind of hard to show this, but there's two uh, boards, and the boards connect and sandwich in between each other, and it was slightly disconnected. So I just squished them back together. I'm just also noticing it's missing some uh, screws here to uh, keep it hard mounted in there. So I'll probably try to find some screws, but now this is working properly. So you notice somehow this actuator moved on its own, but now I should be able to get it uh, connected uh, to the computer and working properly. Okay, so I've been troubleshooting for, I don't know how many hours now. Uh, but I basically was running into problem after problem trying to get the actual motion working and I finally figured it out. So one of the problems was the Thanos board. I think I might have talked about this already, but the Thanos board was not uh, seated properly with the different uh, PCBs being sandwiched together. So that was just showing me blank information. It wasn't working right. Fix that. The other thing was my outlet in this garage. Oops. My outlet in this garage is a GFI outlet. It's one of those that has like the little reset button you press. And it was tripping as soon as it got power. It would trip the outlet. And I would try different outlets inside the house and they would all trip. Well, it turns out the kitchen outlets and the bathroom outlets are also GFI outlets. So the only one that worked was the one in my laundry room. So I have that running off an extension cord and now it works. So I'll, uh, turn off the uh, e-stop right here and now it's going to do its little calibration and you can see it moving it's doing that little rotation and then it'll reset back to center but I also got it working with uh, Sim Racing Studio so it's being controlled by the PC that's all good there you go but one one other thing that I've noticed and 
it's not like a huge issue. It, it really depends on who you are. Some people can't even hear it. But these actuator drivers, uh, I believe they're an older model and they have a really high pitch 10 kilohertz whine. And so like right now it's driving me absolutely crazy. But thankfully when I put headphones on, I can't hear it at all. So it won't be a problem while driving. I hope it's not an issue on the microphone. Uh, well, if I'm like streaming or anything, uh, but you can upgrade those. It's pretty expensive. I think it would cost me about a thousand dollars to replace them with newer versions. And I, I believe they don't whine anymore. So perhaps I'll sell those and then try to uh, upgrade them in the future. But if it's not an issue while driving, then you know, I might not bother. But next up, I'm just trying to get as prepared. I don't have the bolts for the uprights. I gotta wait for those to, to come in. I got this, uh, oh. you see here, if you're trying to get in the rig, there's just an empty void here with the actuator. It might fall in uh, if you're a little bit clumsy. So that should make uh, life a little bit easier because this thing is tall and it's it rises up three inches when it's actually in a driving position, which got me even a little bit more sketched out, but I think I'm still okay with the mounts, fingers crossed. But I'm probably gonna work on finishing the foot plate and doing the uh, pedal mount. So this pedal tray is the original P1X pedal tray, but it's got the track racer heel plate on it, which is adjustable. So my original Husingvelt heel plate, I've always hated this thing. It's, it's pretty narrow, it's fine size-wise for me, but I know some people it might be a little bit too narrow. Uh, but my biggest issue with it is that it flexes and it flexes just a little bit but when you're paying almost $1,500 for pedals and your pedal tray flexes I feel like that's kind of inexcusable I don't know I was always very upset with this pedal tray so now I'll have a nice heel plate a lot more uh, width so I can really you know dial in the position exactly where I want it and I can mount these nice and solid directly to the heel tray itself. But yeah, that's pretty much it for now. Uh, I'm just gonna have to guesstimate some of the stuff here until I get the uh, seat brackets in to mount the seat again and, uh, and mount the uh, steering. Also, just kind of pre-planning how I'm gonna do this SIM core mount, which another cool thing about this SIM core mount is leg room was always an issue for me because I had this HRS bottom mount. And so I had the, the flat bar right underneath it. And it was fine, but if you wanted to get comfy or get in and out of the rig, it was a little bit difficult. And it also meant the uprights were really close to me, which also made the rig just a pain to get in and out of. So my old setup, let's see here, focus. The front of the semi key was basically in line to the to the sidebar, but now I can adjust this and I can go way out forward about that much. So you can see the front mount of it. The semi cube is going to be way farther forward, and I'm going to have way more clearance. And then since it's side mount, I'm going to have way more knee leg room to not bump it. So that's I'm honestly super excited. For that yeah it's been a long two days i'm just gonna keep going as far as i can and just try to be as ready as possible for uh when I, the rest of the stuff arrives and just kind of figure it out i also think i have to get some rubber mats under the rig because on this carpet when i was testing the motion this thing was pretty violent and it was sliding around on the carpet so obviously there's still about another 250 pounds that'll be on it with everything mounted and then me sitting in it but uh, i definitely think i'll have to tackle that and the monitors is gonna be a huge one. Uh, I hope that one works out, so we'll keep moving. Here I'm trying to figure out if I can get the width of the center monitor uprights to fit how wide the bottom base layer of this new setup is. So I basically maxed out how wide I can get it and had to even rotate the pieces to be even thinner. God, it fits by half an inch. <laughs> oh. oh my God, I'm so lucky. It is uh, currently 11.05 at night. It's not that late. 
Uh, I've been talking to a buddy of mine, and I was starting to realize that because of all the movement, the surge, how much it leans forward, uh, and how wide it is and everything, I was going to lose quite a bit of field FOV, field of view. Now, I'm an FOV snob, so I'm used to running 210 degrees of FOV, which is the full human eye uh, vision. And I might drop down to like 170, 180. I think that's about what I'd probably get um, estimate, which is... <laughs> Realistically, that's more than enough, but I can't I can't downgrade and and also, you know I've always been kind of worried uh, Especially with a system this capable with six inches of travel and surge and everything It's gonna be moving a lot. Maybe not for road racing, but for like drifting and rally um, You know if I'm on a banked turn and I'm like, you know leaning this far It's gonna be kind of jarring to me uh, the seat mover was a little jarring when I had that much movement, so I had, well, it was worse because you're moving away from your steering wheel, but even then, a lot of movement, um, while kind of overkill, uh, I do think the best way to do it is have the screens move with the motion, or with the system. So, now, I have 48 inch screens, it's kind of big. Um, but I'm an idiot or a genius. We'll find out because I'm going to try it. I did some research, found some brackets that I think will work. Um, I'm also, one thing I'm concerned about is weight. So my buddy uh, that I got the system from says the weight's probably gonna be no problem. And really, you know, you're gonna be running smoothing anyways. So you can just, you know, play with the intensity. So even if there is more weight, and I'm a pretty small small guy, I weigh like 150 pounds, so uh, I think it'll be okay, but also I think I'm gonna play with the profile sizes because I won't need super tall profile anymore. I think uh, I have some different variants and sizes and I think I can go smaller and maybe I'll cut some uh, to get the perfect sizing. Uh, and I've already kind of figured out how to, I hope that screen is not screwing up my lighting, uh, my terrible lighting. But I've I figured out, I think, how I'm going to do it to make it rigid, uh, to make the monitors rigid. Uh, that was a big, big thing. And the solution is like the most simplest thing. I I'm, don't know how I didn't think of it earlier. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to tear this whole thing down and get, get a little crazy and, and hopefully it works. And if it doesn't, then uh, it doesn't. So... Uh, I don't know what else to say. Uh, I think that's it. I think I covered everything. But if I did want to run it, I, I did finally get it to fit. It would have fit in there. But like I said, I'm an FOV snob. So I kept tinkering into ungodly hours of the night, listening to 80s rock and roll to drown out the sim racing ideas in my head so I didn't get any crazier. <laughs> All right, so this is how far I've gotten so far. I've put this uh, tool chest here. I got this table in the middle. And then this is my backdrop for my studio recording setup. So I still gotta wanna flesh this out a little more and kind of make it into a somewhat practical set. So I have some decorations or something more sim racing stuff or car stuff on display, shelves, something just to make this look more interesting. When I am sitting right on the table doing product reviews or talking head type content, and then the sim rig had to pause for here. I changed this support. Unfortunately, it's not long enough to go to both sides, but I do have another one, so I was just gonna bias one to the right and bias one to the left, but I'm still waiting on parts to get any further. So I just stopped here and I spoke to my brother who's an engineer. And once I have the seat in and everything dialed in for positioning uh, and the monitors mounted, then I'm going to figure out uh, what's the strongest way to support the side monitors 
Um, and I'll get some help from him and some advice from him to have the strongest shape because this is pretty, pretty good, but I still feel like it might not be enough and it's not really a good like geometric shape for rigidity in this case. Um, so I plan on making that better. So I'll continue when I get the parts and that'll be in the next video, uh, finishing this up and dialing it in. And then here I just have my desk, my workspace. Uh, I like that it's now kind of out of the way so I can set up my lights. I'm gonna have to push this rig a little bit farther that way, maybe even rotate it, I'm not quite sure. Um, but I can set up my lights on either side. Uh, I can get them closer if I need to. And I can have my studio set up uh, without interfering with the desk or interfering with the sim rig where I'm having to move stuff all the time. So this, with this amount of space, I'm hoping that I'll just be more productive. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's a long one and it's a bit crazy, but I'm really looking forward to the end results of this. So if you're also interested, feel free to subscribe to the channel if you wanna see more and the content I got planned with this ridiculous setup. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, cause that always helps the algorithm or whatever YouTube is doing. But here's hoping I get the parts really soon so I can get this going and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.